subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Light Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos, each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisories, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com. So we got a world record holder here? We got a world record holder here. It came all the way from Pipistrelle in uh, Italy is the correct term. Yeah, but this airplane has done a lot of things that we've seen that's interesting before. This has won the NASA competition, won a great big fat check, I believe about $165,000 if I can remember that, or maybe more, I'm told. But at any rate, it's a uh, very interesting airplane, one of a family of airplanes from a company called Pipistrelle. They have some interesting names on them that throw people a little bit. Looks like Sinus, it's actually Sinus. This one looks like Virus, but it's actually Virus. So we have a little fun with their names, but the airplanes are just some handsome birds. Let's have a closer look. Now, this airplane looks like it's got some glider background. It does. Uh, that's pretty easy to tell, but it's also a fairly easy identifier. Uh, look at the nice smooth wings on these babies. All composite structure and uh, very smooth lines throughout. The company has a glider background, and they still make gliders, both powered and unpowered ones. So here's an example of some of their work done in a more conventional airplane, but retaining all those good characteristics. Good glide, high efficiency, low fuel usage, and uh, prize winning capabilities. Now, is this an, an all composite airplane right now? This is an all composite airplane. And available, this one's in tri-gear as you obviously see here, but they make airplanes that are available in tail dragger mode as well. And um, uh, the this one, the, the Beerus, has actually a shorter wingspan on it. Looks like a pretty long wing, not particularly long, but the Cenus model has a longer wingspan on it, more of a motor glider. Well, definitely a motor glider. This is a standard Rotax 912 engine available either at 80 or 100 horsepower. It really only needs 80 because it's this clean flying machine, and that's 80 horsepower is a really nice engine. Can use a regular automobile gasoline, doesn't require high test and burns a little bit less of it too and has a little lower maintenance requirements because of its lower compression. Now we have a steerable nose wheel on this as well? Steerable nose wheel, dual pedals inside with tow brakes. And um, we're going to go and have a look at some of that. I think we ought to look now. inside because some of the beauty is on the inside of this area. It looks like you're sitting in a Ferrari there. It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? All these nice curvy seats and everything, but you know, Ferrari is not quite the right term. It should be Audi. Well, why Audi? Because they actually make the seats for this airplane. Isn't that pretty cool? So in the seat structure here, it's all sort of firm and placed right up against the fuselage. It looks like, well, how would you adjust this? Well, beside the fact that it's got a nice place, uh, your, your bottom side sits down here, and then it curves up a little bit, which is really quite comfortable on, the, on your upper thighs for seating, but you don't adjust the seat. You adjust the pedals. Here's a handle down here you can see. And you can notice that there's cables that run up to the pedals and so forth. Of course, that's the actuation cables. But let me do it over here on my side now. As I pull back with on this handle, the same one we've got down here, as I pull back, those pedals are coming to me. And you can see where my knees are now. So now, with my heels, I just push the pedals back. And now I am back. I don't think I got them quite all the way. And I'm just at leg extension. That's quite a bit of adjustment. So that's how we deal with height in the Pipistrel Beerus. And control system, Dan, what are they using controls? Well, we've got dual controls on both sides of the airplane. Very nice. Uh, nice, again, nice leather wrap. This is all leather here. It feels very nice on my, uh, in my seating. Uh, dual joysticks, very comfortable, very nice position here, easily handled. Uh, push to talk on top. Of course, all your center controls, but what's nice and shiny down here, we looked at the pedals before, but again, that was just for adjustment. Dual pedals, and both sides have tow brakes. That's not something you see on every airplane. It's getting more common, but it's not on all of them. So some of these use hand brakes. This one doesn't. Here in the center structure, you've got throttle, choke handle, and flap handle. Flaps go from uh, 0 to 9 to 18 degrees down. That's in the normal flap position. But then we go back to 0, but that's not all. We can go down some. We actually can go down 5 degrees, and that will, uh, at speeds above uh, 60 miles an hour, or 60 knots, excuse me, and then that gets you a little extra speed by curving those flaps up at the end of the wing, 
reducing the uh, drag that a, uh, a straight wing would create and allowing you to go just a little bit faster. I'll bet you it adds in the neighborhood of two or three knots to it. Two or three knots for no extra cost is a nice benefit. And what's this uh, big black handle in the center there? Big black handle up here. There's actually a couple of handles up here, one big, one small. The big one is, and you're going to have to go back with your camera to see it, but we'll just show you the action now. Doesn't seem like it does much here. And then there's another handle up here, kind of heart and near to, near to my heart. There's a parachute handle up here. Now, you can't see too much of it. There would normally be a flag hanging down. We're at an air show here. We're at Sebring 2010, 2011, excuse me, new year upon us. And so they've got this one all wrapped up as they should so that nobody ends up pulling this thing while we're sitting here at an air show. But right here is a parachute that'll bring this whole airplane down. Uh, I used to work in that uh, kind of industry and I'm very big on having that kind of equipment in here. In addition to which we got some lighting back here, a little speaker and our headset plug-ins. So all very convenient right to us. If you look over my shoulder a little bit, Dave, you'll see the fuel system here. And it's replicated on both sides at what's called a wing rut here, which also is nicely leather covered. And this your fuel on and off. So we got fuel in both wings and a total of 26 gallons of fuel on board. That'll take this airplane quite a long ways. Again, we go back to that smoothness and with a smaller 80 horsepower engine, uh, I'm pretty sure I would have to land this airplane before it ran out of gas because I needed to have one of those rest stops. And what's this beam that runs across the center of it, Dan? Well, it's actually two beams here is what we got. And normally this would all be covered over and you wouldn't see this. And I'll bet it's got some of that nice leather covering on it. But for now, what we've got are the two wing spars that come in and mate to each other. Kind of like that is about how that works. That makes for a real strong package. If you can get your camera right up here, you'll see there's a pin here. And as you crank down on this, you start the process. Of course, that's not the end of it. But you start the process of being able to easily remove these wings. So I'm going to push it back up there where it needs to be, but then both the wings can come off. And when they come off, all the controls just disconnect. Now you'll have to deal with fuel in the wings and so forth, so you'd have to, you might want to drain all that out before you transported it. So this is not a wing fold just to put it in the hangar. It's going to take a little more doing than that. But this kind of long wing beauty here is going to be able to collapse down quite small for shipment or storage of that kind. Now, panel-wise, what are they offering for panels? Well, they're using the Dynon, and, they're, and in this panel space we've got here, the big, great big screens that some of the guys are using uh, are not going to work. But you've got plenty of information here at our good old, now standard sort of equipment, D100, D120 Dynons. These are in a lot of uh, light sports, and they're in a lot of light sports because they do a great job. Uh, you can have these two screens operating. They can put, they can swap screens, they can split screens, they can do a lot of things. It's a computer just like we know so well now with glass cockpits and uh, a lot of information available there for a very reasonable price. And what kind of restraining system are they using on that? We've got uh, four four-point uh, belts here so that uh, covers you up real nice, all nicely uh, brand named on them. That'll hold you in position real well. And again, you know, I've been sitting in the seat now for a few minutes, really comfortable in here. And it might look like I got a little headroom constraint here. And I suppose if I was, uh, you know, 6'5 or something like that, it might be a little snug on me. But I, there's plenty of room in here, and I've got plenty of visibility. I can see quite broadly out of this, considering, especially considering, the fact that this airplane is, is sort of lean and tight like it's supposed to be in order to be this high performance, uh, either cruising machine or soaring machine, depending on what you want to do with it. On the airplane, Dan, where we go? A lot more information available on pipistrel-usa.com. And you have a flight report on this airplane, Dan? Uh, not on the Beerus, Dave, but I do have one on their motor glider version, which is now known as the Cenus. And I do have a pilot report on that on my website, bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.